sometimes certain teams will have a draft and you envision that they should do one thing or they should go in one direction and then when they don't the tendency is to just automatically sit there and say well their draft sucked or this is stupid or that was stupid and sometimes that's unfair because sometimes based off of the way the draft board breaks and the way certain scenarios and situations play out, a team might not be able to go in a certain direction that you think they should. However, maybe sometimes certain teams need to just go in that direction that they should because clearly everybody else can see it, everybody that is, except that actual organization itself. And when it comes to the Pittsburgh Steelers, their team that fits into this mold, for some particular reason, this organization has a complete and total allergy uh, towards taking defensive backs in the first round of the NFL draft. The last time they took a corner in the draft, if memory serves me correctly, was Chad Scott all the way back in 1997. The last time they took any defensive back in the first round was back in 2003 when they made a big move up the board to go get Troy Polamalu, this long-haired uh, Islander dude from freaking USC, and we'll see him someday in Canton. When you look at the Pittsburgh Steelers, their offense was elite in 2014. Their defense was anything but Steel Curtain-esque. And in particular, what happened was the chickens came home to roost for this organization after so many years of criminally neglecting the secondary in the draft in particular and lacking in young depth and talent at all positions. Uh, you know, the Steelers secondary was bad, terrible, awful, overaged, overpaid, overpaid, overrated, and underproducing in 2014, which should surprise absolutely no one. So I was on record before the 2015 NFL draft saying that the Pittsburgh Steelers had six needs. That was five defensive backs and an edge rusher. And in some particular fashion, that's where their first six picks should go. Well, obviously, the Pittsburgh Steelers didn't do that. Um, they did some of that, but they didn't do all of that. Does that necessarily right away make their draft a failure? No. But it doesn't necessarily mean that I like the direction that they actually went. Now, in terms of the first-round pick, Bud Dupree, I was big on Bud Dupree. Some are not. Um, now, if he can sit there and be given a specific position, in this case, an edge rusher in the 3-4, you know, and be able to focus on that position, whereas Kentucky was lining up all over the place, I think he could unleash his massive potential that his athleticism suggests that he has. And we have some potential bus potential as well. I still maybe would have wished that he would have ended up with a 4-3 team, but it's with the Steelers that he ends up. And you look at it, he'll have a chance, an opportunity to contribute right away. Jason Worlds has retired. Jarvis Jones is a nothing. So there's an opportunity here for Bud Dupree to make an impact. And when you're looking at a team that was so criminally bad in the secondary for the past several seasons, one way to help out that sec secondary is improve that pass rush. And that's one thing that had become the calling card of the Steelers' defense for so many years was their defense, and in particular that front seven, in particular their linebackers and their ability to generate a pass rush. And you know what's bad when you're barking up the James Harrison tree and asking him to play significant snaps in his mid-30s outside. So when I look at Bud Dupree, you know, I understand why they took him based off of the way the board had broken down. Trey Waynes was already off the board. Kevin Johnson was already off the board. Marcus Peters was already off the board. There may not have been a safety that was worth that pick at number 22. So I could understand why they would have taken Bud Dupree. In fact, I think he was the better choice than a Shane Ray because I think Bud Ray has a better systematic fit naturally in the scheme that the Steelers are going to run than what Shane Ray does. And especially if they're going to implement some 4-3 principles now that Dick LeBeau is finally out of the picture. You know, so I did like the Bud Dupree pick, and I understood it. And based off of the situation, I'm not going to knock them a ton because I don't really know that there was a defensive back there at number 22 <clears throat> that they absolutely couldn't pass up and they just had to take. Some might throw in their Landon Collins, but I don't think Landon Collins was a first-round pick in this draft. I'm sorry, I do not. You could have made the argument, and it wouldn't have been a huge reach, but I just think Bud Dupree was a better football player. So, again, he was their best pick, and I think he makes a lot of sense. One other pick that I really liked for the Pittsburgh Steelers was Doran Grant, the corner from Ohio State. Getting him on the beginning of day number three in round four, here's a guy that I think is a starter for them at some point in time as a rookie. Frankly, I think is the best defensive back that they took in this draft, even though they took two others. In terms of picks that I second-guess, though, when it comes to the Steelers, I'm really having a hard time understanding Senquez Golson in round number two from Ole Miss. You finally do choose to address the secondary with an early pick. And when you do, it's with a corner that's lucky to measure 5'9". And I mean really lucky to measure 5'9". 
you have needs all over the place in that secondary, and you thought the best player available and the best systematic fit for you was Golson out of Ole Miss, I don't know about that. To me, there were just better talents and better players on the board at that particular point in time. Um, so when they sat there and took him in round number two, I'm like, what the hell are they doing? He might have been a guy that could have gotten a round or two later. Now I look at Sammy Coates, the wide receiver from Auburn, and in some ways I understand the pick. You could interpret him to be decent value there, a size speed guy, and it's always nice to have those type of weapons at wide receiver. You've got Martavis Bryant, who had a nice rookie campaign when he finally got the opportunity to play in 2014. You've got Antonio Brown. You know, so you're not expecting a lot out of Sammy Coates right away, but you're also potentially giving yourself some insurance as an organization against a potential ugly contract situation down the road with Antonio Brown. Um, with that said, though, even though he was good value, and I understand the pick, the Steelers were one of those teams in one of those situations where I will talk about need more than best player available because so often they have failed to address that need that it becomes that need that has to shape your entire draft board. And when I'm looking at what they do, you know, the fact that they didn't address safety at any point in time. Granted, not a great safety class, but they waited until round seven with Holloman, a little bit of a value there, but not too much. You know, I'm sitting there around three, you know, it might be wise to address that secondary again because it has become that much of a vacuum of suck for your organization. And when you look at the fact you already spent the first round pick on an edge rusher, now you're using your third round pick on a bit of a luxury, frankly, in Sammy Coates. And, and in my opinion, he was a bit of a luxury and he wasn't the best receiver on the board at that point in time either. Um, so again, I look at it and the other thing I really question is, how much the Steelers address the secondary. They addressed it some, but I question in some ways the way they addressed it in the case of Golson in round number two, and when they addressed it, they were addressed in round two, four, and seven. You know, I understand going after guys like Sammy Coates and Jesse James and even guys like Walton and Chiquillo, you think they're decent values and decent fits for what you want to do, but again, you have been so derelict in what you've done in your secondary, and you've been so criminally negligent in ignoring that position for so many years in the draft. To me, this had to be a draft that the Steelers had to go hard in on that position several times. And even when I look at Golson in round number two, you know, just based off of the way I see it, if I was going to go with an undersized corner at that particular point in time, I might go with the Olsen kid from Oregon State. Or not the Olsen kid, excuse me, the Nelson kid from Oregon State. I thought he was a better prospect. So I'm just... I get the first round pick and I understand it and it makes sense and I can't really knock them on it based off of the positioning of where the Steelers were in the draft and what had already transpired. There really wasn't a prospect in the secondary that made a ton of sense to me in number 22. So I most certainly won't knock them for taking Bud Dupree because again I thought Bud Dupree was good value and a good fit for the Steelers. But for the rest of the draft outside of Doran Grant I really didn't like it and I really don't think the Steelers helped themselves all that much. You know you're expecting now that Steelers offense, in my opinion, to be elite again in 2015, and that might be a bit of a reach in some respects to expect just that, and to expect your team to really, in a lot of ways, be one-dimensional and be all that successful. You know, you would think the point would be to try and take that next step to bring more balance to your team, so that way you can not only win your division and make the playoffs, but make some noise when you get to the playoffs. <clears throat> you know, I just don't think they did it. This was a C-minus draft to me for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I really didn't like it. And again, to be fair, that's going to be because, in my opinion, they needed to address the secondary earlier, more often, and frankly with better picks than what they actually did. And they just didn't. It. And it's that simple.